There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, a boron, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, chromium, lithium, beryllium, and barium. Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about ethylene, what kind of product we can produce from ethylene, and why as well. That was all about that reactivity, the double bond of ethylene, and the fact that that can break and make new compounds. In this video, we're going to cover something quite related. I'll read the actual dot point. It says, identify data, plan, and perform a first investigation to compare the reactivities of appropriate alkenes with the corresponding alkanes in bromine water. So what we have to do in this experiment, and this dot point, is we have to compare the reactivities of alkanes with alkenes. So alkenes were the ones with double bonds, alkanes had no double bonds. And we just have to choose the correct ones. The corresponding means we have to choose the correct ones for this experiment. And we have to do that in the presence of bromine water. And before we start to go through the experiment, I'll go over what again what alkenes and alkanes were, and why exactly we chose bromide water for this experiment. So I'll start with you know, what exactly alkanes and alkenes were. Alkanes are ones which have the A and E at the end. So for example, methane, ethane, propane, and butane. We always have that A and E in the end. Now this is the actual chemical formula for the alkanes, generally chemical formula. With the alkanes, they also have no double bonds, which is different to the alkenes. Now, if, for example, let's say we look at ethane, and we know, should know that F stands for two carbons. So we know, okay, N here would be two, because that's two carbon chains, so N equals two. So for, if we have that given, we can figure out exactly the chemical formula, because we said E stands for two carbons. We know that C is two. Now, H2N plus two, that's two times two, plus 2, which is 6. So overall, the chemical formula for ethane, this is ethane, so eth, meaning two carbons, and the ane at the end making it an alkene, would be this. So we can use that to figure out the chemical formula of different alkenes. Uh, with the alkenes, it's very similar, except for they have an ending of E and E, such as ethane, propene, uh, propene and butene. Its chemical formula is slightly different, and the reason why it's slightly different is because they have no double bond, and they have it. They do have a double bond, so they have double bond, which means they have a few less hydrogens in it because of double bond. So, if for example, again, we're we're looking at ethene, we know eth stands for two carbons. If we know that, then we can we know n equals two, and using that, we can figure out exactly the chemical formula for ethene. So we know C two because n equals two, and then the rest is just H two n. So H is 2 times 2, because N is 2, and that's H4. And that is the formula for ethene. And remember, the systematic name is ethene, but the actual common name we usually use is ethylene, but they're both the same thing. Right, so now we've figured out, okay, what is alkanes and alkenes, and what is the major difference? The major difference is that one has no double bond, which are the alkanes, and the other one has double bonds, which are the alkenes. But I want to talk about reactivity, because this is what this top one is all about, about reactivity. If you remember from your year 11 chemistry, you have talked about reactivity and what exactly that is. And reactivity all has to do with how likely um, it is for a element or a compound to form new compounds. So how reactive they are, how likely they are to form new compounds. That's reactivity in a nutshell. Now when it comes to this here is the periodic table. And you might remember that we know that the halogens, which are the group 7, are the halogens. These are very reactive. And the reason why is because they have 7 electrons in the outer shell. And how much do they want? They want to have 8 to be happy. So they, they're, if they have 8, they're happy. But at the moment, they have 7. So it's very likely for them to grab one electron and become stable, become 8 electron rich in their shell, which makes them happy. So these here, the halogens, are very reactive because they're very happy to just to grab one electron and become extremely happy. So in within those halogens, we have bromine. So Br is bromine, and bromine is a halogen, which means it itself loves to grab electrons. And we might you might remember the word electronegative. Electronegative is just used to describe different elements which are really happy to grab electrons. And bromine, because it's so close to having eight electrons, is a very electronegative electro uh, element. Now when it comes to this experiment, you have 
Now, if you think about the actual, because it's, it's, we're supposed to talk about the reactivity of alkenes and alkanes. Now, there's actually only the same exact elements in both alkenes and alkanes. It's all about CH for the alkanes and also about CH for the alkenes. So, what exactly makes the reactivity different for alkanes compared to alkenes? And we said in the last video that was all about double bond. Like this double bond means, if we look at the Lewis dot structure, it means there are actually, in double bond, there are four electrons in the middle being shared between two carbons. This is a double bond. Whereas in a single bond, there's only two electrons being shared. So this here is our double bond. And you can imagine if you have, for example, something like a bromine, which loves to grab electrons, if you have a bromine close by, what is it going to be attracted more? Is it going to be attracted more to the one which has lots of electrons or the ones that have less electrons? Because the bromine is electronegative, it's going to love to grab onto this and break this and grab some of these electrons. It'd be less likely to go towards a single bond because it's just less electrons. And the double bonds are the alkenes and the single bonds are the alkanes, which is why the alkenes are more reactive. But because there's a science and we have to prove that they're more reactive, that's why I've done this experiment, to show that they're actually more reactive. That's why we use bromide water, because bromide would love to grab electrons, so it would be likely to grab electrons from ethylene. So before we start, again, there's another part we have to cover. It says select the appropriate alkenes and alkanes. Now, why wouldn't we choose, for example, ethylene and ethane? These are the ones we cover so much. Why wouldn't we choose them as our, our alkanes and alkenes for this experiment? The reason why we don't is because they're both gas. Now, the reason why it's a problem is because we're actually going to put these into bromide water. So this here is bromide water. Now, if we're going to put that into bromide water, if it's gas, what's going to happen? Are they going to react together? Well, they might, but they're quite likely just to be going in and then popping back out because they're gas. They're, they're going to move quite fast. So they're actually not going to stay together to react. Even if we put a stopper, like if we put something, a stopper on it to prevent it from, hap from flowing out, it's going to spend most of its time actually just sipping around in the middle not reacting with the bromine. So the reason why these are not appropriate, alkenes and alkanes, is because they're not liquid. They're not going to be able to react with the bromine water. So these are not appropriate because they're not liquid. But the appropriate ones are called cyclohexene and cyclohexane. Now these are both alkenes and alkanes, so the, and they're both the same, very similar. So the cyclohexene is this one here. I'll write it out, cyclohexene. And because it has an E, and E at the end, it makes an alkene, and its formula is C6H10. Now, if you might have noticed, this actually doesn't fit the normal formula of CNH2N, but rest assured that C6H10 is actually a alkene. The only reason why it doesn't have that same amount of hydrogens is because in a cyclic form, which means that circular form, it just has less hydrogen, such as the way it is. Same thing with the alkanes. So cyclohexene was the appropriate alkene, cyclo hexane is the appropriate alkane. And why are they appropriate? Well, they're appropriate because they're liquid at room temperature. This ring makes it, increases the boiling point, the circular form, which means it's actually liquid, not gaseous at room temperature. So we can use it, we can mix it with bromide water, which is why they're actually appropriate. So this was the first part. Now, what, what do we really have done in the experiment? Well, first, this was a quite a simple experiment. First, you had two test tubes. And you put those two test tubes in your, tu in your test tube rack. Now you added it into both of these test tubes. You added 20 drops of bromine water to make sure that there's equal amounts. You always want to make sure that you, those things you keep constant. You have equal amounts of them inside. Now the actual chemical equation, because we, we're saying bromine water, not bromine. Even though bromine is liquid, we're actually using bromine water for this experiment. And what bromine water is, it's just your bromine molecules reacting with a water molecule. And what they do is they form new compounds, which are HOBr. So you have an oxygen hydrogen coming across one of those, and the other one has just a hydrogen, leftover hydrogen. All right, so this is the actual chemical equation for bromide water, and you should remember that as well. So next, you would have had, so you have your test tube 1 and your test tube 2. Now, uh, in your test tube 1, you had your alkane in that one, and in your test tube 2, you had your alkene in that one, because you add 20 drops, again 20 drops, of cyclohexane into test tube 1, as well as your alkane, and 20 drops of cyclohexene, I wrote hexane but I was meant to write hexene, hexene into test tube 2. 
Now, what you would do next is just you're going to observe. So you're going to see what happens, if there's any change, any chemical reaction, any reactivity that you can observe. And what you would find is this is test tube 1 and this is test tube 2. And after a certain given period of time, you're going to find that this is the new test tube 1 and this is the new test tube 2. Now, what you have here is you have no change. It looks exactly the same as before. That's because there was no reaction. This was the alkanes. They did not react. Whereas with the other one, the test tube 2, the alkenes, the cyclohexene, you had a change in the color. So the color is a bit, it faded, it decolorized a bit. Right? So this color is faded, which means it's not as strong anymore as it was before. Now, you might think, why is that? Well, the reason why that is, is because we have this. We have HUBR, which was in the water itself, the bromide water, and that saw that double bond, which is here, that double bond of the cyclohexene, and was attracted to it. And it broke it, so it actually broke that double bond, and then it came across the structure. So we have cyclohexene, which is this here, cyclohexene reacting with, with hydrogen bromide, uh, hydroxide bromide, and then creating this new structure, C6H10BROH. And because the bromide, some of the bromide is not anymore in solution, but it actually has gone onto the structure, there's less of it inside the solution, which means the solution itself has faded. That's why the color changes, because this bromide has got onto structure and out of solution, and the color fades. All right, so know this chemical, these, both these chemical equations were introduced. Know them for your, your HC exams. The appropriate alkenes and alkanes were cyclohexene and cyclohexane. And you would have know, observed a change in the color for your cyclohexene, your, your alkene, but not for your alkane, because alkenes are more active than alkanes. Now make sure not to drink or... Wash your hands after you use bromide water. This bromide is obviously a slightly toxic because it's a halogen. And yeah, those are really, really important safety issues. And also keep your 20 drops the same. Keep your concentrations the same. That's also important for setting up scientific experiments. I hope this was useful. Thank you for watching.